。当然，我哋可以有时间就去个大自然里面。我哋除咗个鞋啊，喺嗰啲草地行走下咁样样咧，就可以做到个接地器。但系城市人工作咁繁忙嘅时候咧，其实而家市面上咧已经系有一啲接地器嘅产品咧，咁喺我哋嘅健康店咧已经呢度呢度咧有好多嘅客人咧就系、是、买咗翻去屋企度咧，就每一日都可以接受到呢个接地器嘅治疗啦。接地器产品咧可以喺我哋六创意嘅健康店可以买到噶啦，联络电话系二八八二四八四八。以下节目内容纯属主持及嘉宾个人意见。与本台立场无关。Okay, the topic we're going to talk about is,、uh, is about free energy. Our、uh, guest to, today is、uh, Dr. Brian O'Leary.、Uh, Dr. O'Leary is a、uh, former NASA astronaut and a PhD in astrophysics from Berkeley University. And he had taught at a number of universities in the United States, including Cornell and Princeton. And he has also worked as an establishment scientist, so-called, you know, and published、uh, extensively for many years. And then uh, Dr. Uh, Brian O'Leary became interested in the other、uh, phenomenon, other dimensions of reality. And he has been an avid researcher in free energy, UFO phenomenon, and written a number of books documenting his journey into the field of paranormal phenomenon. Now, his most recent book is the Energy Solution Revolution. And he is speaking with us from、uh, Vicabamba, Ecuador, where I visited him、uh, last week.、Uh, Dr. Brian O'Leary, first,、uh, thank you for coming on air with us with,、uh, and talk、uh, with the Better Hong Kong Radio. Now,、um, as you know,、um, I recently I received uh, some uh, a link, you know, from the internet about your talk、uh, at the、uh, in Spain in the Barcelona. Uh, conference, you know, where you talk about free energy, and that's how it get me interested, you know, to to come and、uh, and meet up with you.、Uh, with, you know, I actually sent out the link to、uh, to a number of our of our、uh, supporters and uh, and uh, listeners, you know, and、uh, and I have a chance to kind of uh, subsequently uh, 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 converse with them, and I sort of ask them, you know, how many of you have watched the, uh, uh, you know, this、uh, this particular very interesting. Uh, uh, talk on the free energy, and surprisingly, you know,、uh, the answer I get back is that not many of them are, are really, you know, have watched that, you know. And of course, the, the the reason given is that well, they don't really know much about this, and I, we didn't have much of an introduction on this. So、um, it, it looks like, you know,、uh, somehow、uh, people are not either not very interested in free energy or really do not understand the significance, you know, of the of the of the free energy solution. Uh, or some of them are even not aware of this. You know, now、um, from your experience, you know,、uh, Brian, you know, what, what what has been your experience when you when you come, you know,、uh, when you talk to to people about free energy in your many、uh, many public uh, 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 lectures? Well, uh, uh, yes. Hello, Alexander, and、um, uh, yes, it's. it's It's a very complex question, and I think you really have uh, uh, have have hit the nub of the problem,、mm -hmm. if you will. It's、yeah. it's a big problem, which is a、uh, it's a question of new paradigms, whole new contexts of reality that we're talking about here.、Uh, it it takes everyone, just about everybody,、uh, quite a bit of time. To begin to understand the enormity of the potential of this new technology, which has actually been with us for a long time,、uh, at least ever since the time of Nikola Tesla, but it even goes back further,、uh, like to the time of Michael Faraday in England, where、um, Faraday discovered in the 1800s that. Uh, anomalous or unusual energy came off of a wheel with magnets on it that was spun up, and somehow or other, he hypothesized that energy came from the vacuum of space. That, in other words, all of time and space、uh, contains an enormous potential energy field, and this is something that I hadn't realized as a mainstream physicist. And at this point now, almost every physicist doesn't realize it either, and、uh, so it takes some time and understanding to provide the proper context 
of what we're talking about here, that we're talking about principles of physics that uh, are derived from quantum mechanics, quantum theory, which are very real and uh, can be used practically uh, if only we go ahead and do it. Uh, however, what's been going on since the time of Nikola Tesla a hundred years ago is that people have tried to develop this and have been suppressed. Uh, it, it, in other words, there are many proofs of concept out there. There are many inventors and researchers all over the world who have developed devices that you can see for yourself that, that, that produce this unusual uh, huge amount of breakthrough and apparently clean energy. But uh, it hasn't been developed because the powers that be, the uh, energy industry, the banking uh, uh, cartels and so forth, don't want it to happen because it threatens their own vested interest. And we're talking about a whole new economy uh, uh, that would supplant, that would overtake the multi-trillion dollar uh, oil and coal industries which are now dominant in our culture worldwide. Now, Nicole te uh, Tesla, you know, I mean, not, uh, can you enlighten us on this? You know, what, what happened a hundred years ago with Nicole Tesla and wh what did he do? Well, Nikola Tesla was a brilliant genius who actually invented alternating current, which uh, some, somewhat ironically is now the, uh, what we use in our electrical systems, in our grid systems all over the world, and which uh, uh, created this, this huge industry in which we have these large central station power plants and the energy goes over wires uh, over great distances to provide electricity for people. Uh, Tesla invented that, but he also invented uh, energy systems which basically take the energy uh, out of the air, out of the vacuum of space, mm. using various electronic devices that are not understood in modern times by electrical engineers because uh, they, they simply don't understand the basic principles uh, which Tesla was able to experimentally demonstrate a hundred years ago. Uh, since then, there have been literally hundreds of uh, inventors uh, that have also uh, produced energy from the vacuum of space and have used systems, uh, a variety of systems to do that. Uh, some of them are based on some of the Tesla technologies, some of them involve uh, magnetic motors, magnets on wheels that spin up and interact with this uh, enormous potential energy field. Uh, some people have developed solid state devices that resonate with this field. These are all a number of, of different devices that have, have been shown in the laboratory to prove the concept that, yes, indeed, we can we can get energy very elegantly uh, from the vacuum of space. And Tesla was one of the first to show that. And, uh, of course, he was suppressed. Uh, his financier, J.P. Morgan, who was the banker, uh, didn't, want, uh, didn't want to fund Tesla's free energy work because then, uh, because Morgan owned all the copper mines, or almost all of them, and, w and that was used in grid systems in this uh, uh, electricity technology we now have, which mm -hmm. is very, very uh, crude and, and uh, uh, outmoded anyway. Mar Morgan did not fund uh, Tesla's free energy work, and Tesla, uh, in his later years, uh, w was uh, uh, basically suppressed and, and unhappy and... Uh, uh, and this, of course, has been the story of just about every inventor since his time. Uh, it's just an idea whose time hasn't come yet mm -hmm. because of all of the uh, suppression that's been going on. In other words, we made a choice. Humanity made a choice about 100 years ago to go in a very crude direction in uh, developing our, our systems for generating electricity.
Now, um, no. I, I know you personally have actually traveled to different uh, countries and actually visited many of these uh, scientists and inventors working on different uh, types of, uh, of uh, uh, potential free energy devices. You know, uh, uh, can you kind of uh, uh, tell us some of the, you know, uh, some of the devices that you, you personally think is the most promising and the mo uh, you're most impressed by it? Yes. Um, there are a number of different technologies. Uh, the, the challenge here mm. is to be able to find a way of electromagnetically interacting with this enormous potential energy field. Mm. which is everywhere in time and space. And so um, I took a, a world tour about 10 years ago. Mm. I visited uh, Dr. Paramahamsa Tawari in India. Uh, he had a magnetic wheel, a magnetic motor, which when you spin it up um, and unplug it, it becomes a free energy, uh, a free running uh, electrical uh, uh, generator mm -hmm. and so I saw him make some demonstrations I visited Dr. Shuji Inamata in Japan uh, who also had one of these devices uh, and then I also visited various researchers in the US uh, in Europe uh, uh, for example uh, Floyd or Sparky Sweet who had a solid state device uh, 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 Mr. John Hutchison from Canada, who has a, uh, a, a crystal which is tuned to the uh, energy field that exists everywhere. Mm -hmm. These are all examples uh, that are very promising of the so-called zero-point energy field, or the the uh, the energy field of, of of the vacuum of space. Now there are other concepts as well. Uh, for example, there are special fuels uh, uh, that are based on hydrogen, special forms of hydrogen and water. Uh, uh, for example, there's a device or a, a plasma tube that's being generated by uh, Dr. Randall Mills in the U.S. He, uh, and then there, there are various cold, so-called cold fusion devices. Uh, these are special... Uh, electrochemical systems in which energy can be sent into it and it's a special uh, uh, catalyst, uh, palladium catalyst that can cause the fusion of hydrogen atoms within water to fuse, uh, to release energy and form helium. So these are all different concepts that have been widely um, researched and widely demonstrated uh, but not yet commercialized yet because when people start to develop prototypes uh, for use, for practical use, then uh, what usually happens is that these inventors are threatened, uh, some of them are assassinated. It becomes a very, very difficult uh, situation because the powers that be, the, the people that are basically running the world, um, don't want this to happen because it threatens their own profits. And so we, we, we now find ourselves in a very um, perilous situation. Uh, I know you in China have uh, serious problems mm -hmm. with needing more and more fossil fuels to generate electricity, to run your transportation systems and your heating and cooling systems. Uh, that are mostly based on fossil fuels or on hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you have a big problem like with coal, and burning coal is, is a very, very uh, polluting uh, global warming uh, ingredient um, which, which is loading the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. This is a very poor alternative to what could be. And so what I'm saying now is that if we can open our minds to even the possibility that these new technologies could um, change the entire energy picture of the world and that we no longer have to pollute the atmosphere the way we are, uh, then we have a, a chance to create a sustainable future for humankind. And this for me was, uh, I, I'm about 70 years old now, and it's taken me many years of 
proving to myself that these things are possible. And so now my job is to alert the world to say, well, okay, let's have a, a, a much better look at this possibility. Even if we don't believe it at first, it's worth pursuing because we need to leave no stone unturned in our quest for clean energy for the future of humanity. Now, um, I, you, you have uh, about, I think that you have written at least five books, you know, uh, about your journey in eliciting all these uh, people or people who have uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, special uh, uh, psychic uh, uh, ability to do things that, we, you know, we, we normally uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't quite really understand. Now, among those uh, scientists, you know, like, like this, uh, this engineering working uh, for the government, you know, it's actually working for a government uh, organization in India, and also the, the scientists in, in Japan, and also happen to be working for the government, you know, organization. Now, uh, what 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 has happened? You know, you 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 visited them almost ten years ago, right? So it's it's been quite some time now. Uh, do you know, uh, 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 you know what is the late, uh, recent status of the development? You know, some, uh, when I talk to uh, friends about this, and they say maybe in India they, they, they're already de developing something uh, uh, you know, uh, un underhandedly, and they just, they just don't want the world to know that they are doing it. You know, wh what, what do you think is, is happening, and what is the latest with, with some of the uh, people you visited? Like these people actually working for the government organization. Well, that's, that's a good question, Alexander. Yeah. And um, ten years ago when I visited these people, they were simply working with research devices. And mm. sometimes, you know, it takes a lot of money, time, and effort and engineering to go from a research device to something that's practical, that mm. can actually be used. And uh, so that gap seems to not have been filled yet. Unless, as you say, it's being done very quietly. Right. Uh, to, to the best of my knowledge, um, I don't know of, of any such effort. Of course, because it's quiet, it's mm -hmm. probably the reason why I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, my guess is that it would take a, uh, an effort of, let's say, roughly $100 million, which isn't really that much, but it's still... Would, would be a somewhat visible effort, uh, which, which would, would uh, be immediately noticed. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're caught in uh, what we call a conundrum, uh -huh. a, a problem. Where the problem is that uh, as soon as we get to the the the, uh, the actual development, then the powers that be come in and they stop it. And there are many such case studies of suppression. There have been many murders of people that have been on the cutting edge of this technology. And uh, so it took me several years in going case by case and visiting some of these devices to be able to begin to understand why isn't it, why is it that we don't have it yet if we have the, the, the know-how? And mm -hmm. the, I think the answer to that is simply that choices have been made by very powerful people not to do that. And... Let's say we were to do it nevertheless, and somehow uh, India or uh, maybe China or right. some government could m move ahead and do this, mm -hmm. uh, then the question comes up, well, let's make sure we use this for human benefit and not to make weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is very, very important to me. I'm basically a pacifist myself. I'm... Uh, I, I believe very, very much in, in peaceful uh, existence mm -hmm. of humanity. And right now, I think that, that uh, the, the, the nations of the world are, are too much uh, thinking about war and not enough about peace. So uh, as soon as we start to look at the free energy technologies and their potential, it also forces the question of, well, how can we create social and political systems that um, uh, then can create harmony in the world, that can create peace and the sustainability that we we really want to have, uh, and and be able to get through this very difficult period in in our history. Now, I, I uh, over the years when I was looking into this uh, free, uh, free energy uh, uh, matter, 
um, I, I oftentimes I communicated this with a uh, with a friend who has a degree in uh, engineering physics. You know, every time we talk about it, we, I, we all I always <laughs> we always wind up you know having big argument. And basically, you know, he said it's, it's, yeah. it's not possible. You know, then I will I will send him a link and to investigate it, and he always come back. You know, it's not it's not true. It cannot be done. You know, and then in the end, end, you know, he said, well. Uh, uh, theoretically, he, you know, he, he said it's not possible, right? I mean, we all know the conservation of um, energy and all the basic laws of physics. So from and, – and, and all the uh, thermodynamics. And, I mean, for people with that kind of uh, background, they, they will always feel that, you know, uh, it is not a possible uh, situ- uh, uh, phenomenon. But then he also said that, you know, it, this, a lot of people will probably feel that way too. You know, if, if, if free energy, you know, is uh, potentially uh, so powerful, and there should be a lot of money in it, you know, I mean, we are talking about, uh, you know, a, a substitute for all the, uh, all the different other form of energy uh, 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 resources, then there will be so much money, there should be no problem sitting uh, in financial backup in, in, uh, investors. Well, uh, that's a very complex question, Alexander. Mm-hmm. There are many there are many facets to that question. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, uh, uh, my, and what's happening now is my voice is coming back on me here uh, in the connection, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer that as best that I can. The First of all, the point is that uh, we talk about the physics of this, the so-called laws of thermodynamics are not laws, they're theories. And they apply only to closed systems that are in equilibrium. And those are conditions that normally prevail that we understand here on the Earth. Uh, And what happens, however, is that in quantum physics, when we deal with with so-called particles and waves, those, those so-called uh, theories or laws, they're not really laws, uh, mm-hmm. no longer apply. So there are exceptions, and thermodynamics does not apply to a range of conditions uh, that can be created through, the, uh, uh, through the, some of the interactions we're talking about in, in um, getting the free energy out of the vacuum. Uh, Chaos theory uh, is an example of the violation of the so-called principles of thermodynamics. The systems that we are talking about here are larger than just the limited uh, uh, conditions of thermodynamic systems. So we have to get that out of our mind and be open to the possibility that, yes, we are dealing with quantum phenomena, and quantum um, uh, theory actually dictates that the so-called free energy potential field does exist. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, and, and so uh, several people have worked this out, people like uh, theoretical physicist Hal Putoff, who has uh, published a number of papers on this, uh, Bernard Heisch, um, and then, of course, there's the work of Tom Bearden, and others uh, that make it very uh, understandable uh, from a physicist's point of view that indeed the, this, uh, these principles are, are possible, that we're dealing with, with getting energy from a higher or an alternative dimension of reality that is being interacted with electromagnetically. So these uh, scientific principles can be understood through some study. And... Meanwhile, I would invite the public to simply be open to the possibility that these energy sources uh, do exist in principle and could be used practically, and that um, anybody that has the uh, the time and energy to to visit the laboratories of some of these people will find out for themselves that that it's experimentally possible and uh, also theoretically reasonable so that these blocks, uh, you see what we're dealing with here is a psychological phenomenon of denial, the denial of um, a possibility 
that is not normally encountered. And the scientific community is, is famous for its conservative bias, its bias against possibilities that go beyond their normal understanding. I, I had that problem myself when I was at Princeton. And I had to leave Princeton because I started to have experiences and do experiments that were not accepted by the mainstream scientific community. So if we get beyond that block, the scientific block, then we can go on to other, other possibilities. Then we can start to look at, well, why isn't anybody investing in this? And the answer is that, first of all, in venture capitalism, people generally don't like to invest in something that is not developed enough. In other words, you're caught in a, we call it chicken and the egg problem. In other words, what comes first? Mm -hmm. The chicken or the egg? If, if, you, if you put money into free energy, you'd like to get results within a certain amount of time. And because we're, what we're dealing with now is we don't know which technology will, will uh, prevail. It's sort of like asking the Wright brothers who flew the first airplane to start to build a practical airplane, mm -hmm. uh, delivering passengers or mail or, or bombs or whatever application is, is, is envisioned. Well, th we're not there yet. And so th there, there is a kind of a hesitancy there, but also just as importantly that when people do start to fund these efforts, and they don't get delivery of the product because the inventor is overly optimistic sometimes. Um, there is also suppression. People come in uh, uh, who uh, represent black operations from uh, the U.S. government or some other governments or, or uh, representing the, the large banking cartels or the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. They don't want this to happen. Okay. So they've been okay. mm. stopping these things. Okay, Let, let's take a, uh, a few minutes break. You know, we'll be back uh, right away. 哎呀,你輪轉的你風濕骨痛,好辛苦啊。电话 2882-4848 网址是 www.healthshop.com.hk Issue of free energy you know, Our guest uh, Dr. Brian O'Leary uh, is uh, uh, speaking with us from uh, Vicababa, uh, Ecuador Now, I, uh, uh, Brian, uh, uh, James, you know, James Chu here want to uh, uh, ask you a, a few questions also Yes, hi Brian Hi, Dr. O'Leary. I should Hi. call you Dr. O'Leary. <laughs> um, um, as I r said earlier, I am a fellow free energy researcher uh, in Hong Kong, and I, I actually study a lot of the, uh, the devices that you mentioned. And uh, so I know what you're saying is absolutely true, at least to me. And I have two questions for you. The first is that um, you mentioned earlier um, that there is a need for people not to utilize the free energy devices and turn it into a weapon. So my que first question is, how do you prevent people from doing that? And the second question is, uh, if you talk about the need for people to um, develop more spiritually, uh, their consciousness, to be more peace-loving, then the question is, well, how do you see the... the uh, the sequence of event. In another word, do we need to develop more peacefully first, or can we develop the free energy device first and then become more peaceful? What do you think? Well, these are excellent questions, and, and you've obviously gotten, um, your, your thinking about this has matured uh, enormously, because as soon as people... Uh, go through certain phases of understanding of what's possible here, 
Uh, first of all, scientifically, if you understand it, if you understand the engineering, then you can get to the social political aspects, which are really the more important aspects uh, for this discussion. And I totally agree with you that, and, and I have very mixed feelings myself uh, about about this technology because it is so powerful. Uh, it could be abused, just like nuclear energy. And I am very, very, uh, you know, and this is just personally, personally very upset with what the U.S. government and governments have been doing in terms of foreign policy that are very aggressive. And I would love to see of the world get together and discuss the issues that really count, which is peace and sustainability. And justice. If 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 we cannot um, the energy systems we now use, it, it's widely acknowledged, are are very very polluting, and we can't go on like this for another let's say generation or two, or uh, the planet itself is is is, is well, well we're not going to survive as a species, and nature is is being destroyed as well. We can't have, for example, China build a new coal power plant every week or two and, and, and expect to have a sustainable future. We can't have the U.S. Uh, have all these nuclear weapons uh, and, and expect to just uh, possibly use them. These things are, are, are not okay. And so I think you're right. I think that we need to come together and have a very... Uh, a bold peace agenda before we develop free energy, but I think that we need to develop the free energy because if we don't, we, we're going to uh, kill ourselves that way. So it's a, it's, th these questions are huge, and they need to be openly discussed. Now, my understanding of these free energy devices is that they're actually... Uh, very easy to construct once you understand how it works. Um, so if that's the case, then even though government, uh, governments around the world uh, set up treaties to stop um, the, 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 the technology from be being uh, converted into a weapon, but individuals, you know, quote-unquote terrorists or anybody who is not satisfied with uh, the situation can always construct a very simple device that can possibly be as powerful as an atomic bomb. So how do you stop that? That's an ex extremely important question once again. You're really, you're, uh, your thinking is very mature on these questions. And I, I don't have a simple answer because, first of all, we don't know how easy it is to build one of these things. We really don't know. Um, I have heard many reports of researchers that have an oper uh, think they have an operating device only to have it not operate at times. It seems like these devices are not very reliable. Uh, the, it's, and that's one of the reasons why the development has been delayed. Uh, and maybe that's actually good news. I have a theory, and it's maybe a wild one, that maybe these devices respond to the conscious intention of the experimenter, mm -hmm. and that there may be an energy field of consciousness, which is, I think, very similar to the energy, uh, the, the energy field itself that can generate the electricity, that, uh, that, that perhaps these devices respond to the intention of the experimenter. Now, there, there have been some uh, 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 preliminary experiments that show that to be true. And if it is, maybe, may, maybe that problem can be averted. Maybe, uh, maybe through positive thinking, positive uh, conscious intention, uh, that, that, that these devices can work only through that. It's, it's maybe just a hopeful thing, but that certainly is, is a possibility. Now, yes. the other thing, of course, is, is that nuclear weapons and biological weapons are already there, and 
and can, under some conditions, possibly be used by terrorists. So I, I, I don't think the situation here, the potential situation, is much more dangerous. Uh, suffice it to say, we live in a very dangerous world, and, and maybe, maybe through um, the exercise of consciousness that we, we haven't yet, and we hope it never would happen yet, ever ever have a release of any kind of weapon of mass destruction of any kind on this on this planet ever again. Uh, in your, um, I mean, uh, when I when I talked to you, uh, uh, you know, last week, and you mentioned you had a meeting with uh, with Jake, you know, the the the, the guy behind the Zeitgeist Addendum uh, document documentary, and. Uh, I mean, he, I, I, I mean, the question is, you know, uh, what, what is human nature? You know, the, the, the insecurity, the greed, you know, the, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, ambitious, you know, we often, often find inherent in human nature uh, may just as well be a result of the system that we are in. You know, we are living in a system of, of sort of a so-called scarcity, you know. And then and maybe, you know, when, when we have abundant energy and we, we can eliminate uh, uh, worldwide uh, uh, poverty, and maybe the, a lot of the concern that we have may, may, not, may not happen. That's my hope, um, Alexander. Mm-hmm. I, I really hope that we can um, mature as a species and uh, that the people of the world can arise and uh, end this this scarcity and greed. Mm-hmm. It's obvious that the powers that be want all the power to themselves. And there are many theories about who they are and why they're doing it, what they're doing. And we have to get beyond that. Uh, it's obvious that the, that building coal power plants or increasing even further the U.S. military budget is, is, is ridiculous uh, because we can have a world of abundance. Uh, the free energy is pointing us to the way, to the day when people, uh, for example, uh, just like in, in uh, miniaturization of computers and information technology, you could have energy technologies where you could fit a 10 kilowatt power pack in the palm of your hand and put it in your uh, circuit breaker box or or under the hood of your car and you could have free energy uh, there, there's no more need for scarcity there's no more need to have an elite uh, hold all the power mm-hmm. that those days would be over and there's there'd be no more need for pollution or for war this is my hope I don't know whether it can happen it's really up to us to be able to be open to the possibilities here, and that's why this 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 uh, question of free energy is so important, and why people need to get beyond their skepticism and just uh, be open to the possibility that we could have a world of abundance, that we could have clean water, that we could really have a sustainable future for humankind. This is my wish. This is my hope. Uh- Dr. O'Leary, mm. I, re- regarding what you said earlier, that it is, it is possible that um, the, the device is affected by the intention of the operator, right? You, you said something like that. And I, I want to let you know that, yes, that's a very good point, and I have seen evidence that it is true, by the way. And uh, so I'm, I, I thank you for reminding me of that fact. And it, I think it is possible that the intention of the op- operator can affect the effectiveness of a free energy devices. So if that's the case, then the situation that I was worrying about might not happen after all. Right. <laughs> because if your intention is bad, then the device would fail to work. Right? So that would be that's a very correct. useful uh, uh, positive that, feedback. <laughs> That would be very there, useful, there is, possible. Uh, I think mechanism. one theory. Th- w- one theory here is that there is a higher consciousness on this planet. Uh, some people might say uh, ETs. Uh, some people might say a, a collective unconscious or higher dimensional intelligence. Whatever you want to call it, uh, it it's something that which may have prevented uh, nuclear war, 
something which um, kind of turns on the off switch if anybody has uh, negative intent. And certainly experiments seem to show that when people are combined in intention and the positive intention seems to be more powerful, it's, it's a feeling of surrender to a higher uh, power or energy, then it can be very, very powerful. Uh, there are many experiments that have been conducted by uh, various researchers, uh, William Tiller, Professor Emeritus at Stanford, uh, Robert John at Princeton University. Uh, some of these people have, have actually shown that people combined in intention can uh, actually alter the material world. So I think eventually, uh, in a sense, we are our own free energy devices. This, this is in the longer run. And that we were going to discover that. And, and when we do, humankind might enter a whole new phase of consciousness and evolution. And until that happens, there is this very, very difficult situation we're in where we continue to rely on outmoded energy generation devices and where we, we continue to fight wars and, and spend all the money on, um, on the military, that kind of thing. And that, that's, that's just got to stop. And we have something to replace it with if we can only get through this, this very difficult period we're in. No, I mean, obviously, uh, energy problem is in the, in the back of most people's mind, and there are a number of books written about the, you know, the uh, oil uh, reserves are, are dwindling, and we are going to uh, pass the, uh, uh, the point of no return. And, of course, you know, there have been uh, 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 people looking for alternative energy. As a matter of fact, you know, after I sent out uh, the link to, uh, of your talk, uh, to to uh, to my uh, to my email list, and then uh, a, a person just uh, just wrote us an email, and he said, and he pointed me to a a, a website link. It's all on, on alternative energy. And if you go to the link, you know they give you a you know a list, a long list of of energy such as the solar energy, wind energy, geothermal, etc., etc. Now in, in your book, you also uh, talk about that. Uh, would, would that be a, a interim solution, or, uh, or you know what what I mean, can we rely on that for a while? Well, that's a good question, Alexander. We, we, we're we caught in a dilemma here because when we look at, at solar and wind, uh, biofuels, geothermal, uh, hydroelectric, and so forth, we, we're only looking at a very small percentage of the total energy mix. And that's why, for example, China finds itself in a dilemma in, in uh, feeling it needs to build... Uh, uh, the, the, this this huge hydroelectric system and the three rivers and the the uh, coal power plants and yes solar and wind is better but it's still very capital intensive it's materials intensive uh, let's say you were to power the world with wind power <coughs> or so, or solar energy um, if you were to do that it would cost about. Twenty uh, trillion dollars Two trillion to develop. Dollars, such, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you would you would have to use an enormous amount of land and an enormous amount of materials. It's a very very um, uh, crude technology by today's standards. Uh, we we don't have to go look backwards. When when people consider alternative energy, they don't look ahead. They look backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, they look back into the twentieth century or nineteenth century. We don't have to do that. And that's why, ideally, I'd love to see some sort of internationally sanctioned research and development laboratory where a number of alternative new and free energy technologies are looked at and considered, and there is some sort of management that is peace-oriented uh, uh, and where the security is, is good and where where you can emerge with, with any number of technologies that are breakthroughs. Now, uh, uh, re recently, I mean, with the Obama you know, uh, administration, and there's uh, the new head of the Department of, of Energy uh, happened to be a, a, a Chinese uh, scientist. Um, have you have any experience, you know, with, with that department? Well, uh, yes, uh, a very limited experience. Uh, of course, I've had a, a, a background in NASA uh, going up to about 30 years ago, 
And uh, so I've, I've had occasional interactions. I, I think, uh, and I think it's Stephen Chu, who's the new um, Secretary of Energy, and he seems to be more enlightened, uh, more visionary than some of the people before him. And likewise, the President's Science Advisor, John Holdren, also is uh, more, more open to these possibilities. And Stephen Chu and John Holdren, and I, I've quoted them in my new book, mm. uh, in which they've actually said we, we need to examine all possible energy futures. We can't, we, we can't eliminate these possibilities. They're, they're basically, at least rhetorically, saying what I've been saying all along, is that, yes, we should leave no, no stone unturned in our quest for clean cheap, abundant, decentralized, safe energy. Mm. So uh, I, I'm more optimistic, but I think also what Obama is inheriting and what Stephen Chu is inheriting is, is a very, very difficult bureaucracy which is resisting these kinds of changes because my repeated efforts to... Uh, brief the uh, Department of Energy have gotten nowhere. I, I remember you uh, you wrote to them, right? You actually uh, make some uh, offer some uh, some suggestions to to help out in this area. Well, yes. I, I mean, certainly at first uh, you, you want to be able to build a relationship with people in the government, and uh, because the U.S. government, especially during the Bush administration has gone in such a, a, a negative direction. Um, it seems like Obama has inherited a mess, but on the other hand, uh, nothing much seems to be happening in a positive way yet, and I don't know whether I, I, I can be optimistic about what's happening in the U.S. So that's why one of the reasons why I think it's important to... Um, talk to some of the other governments of the world, including China and India and uh, Ecuador and other places as well, and to make it also transparently clear that this possibility really exists and that it's been covered up and that we, we the people, need to stand and, uh, and, and, and be, uh, uh, mm -hmm. ma make these governments accountable. Mm -hmm. and not to have them uh, join the suppressors, the powers that be that want to control the world. We, we really don't want that anymore. We, we, we want a whole new agenda. We want to think uh, ahead and think boldly about our energy sources as well as many other questions uh, in, instead of trying to, to make the rich even richer and the poor poorer, that we can have a much better world with an agenda that's quite different from that that we hear about, the shadowy agenda that's been uh, proposed by the so-called Illuminati. Mm. Now, uh, in your book, you know, you mentioned in, uh, in, in, your, uh, in your past effort to, uh, to, talk, uh, to promote free energy, uh, you sort of, you know, you kind of, there are four kinds of people uh, in the world um, uh, that are sort of, uh, you know, uh, have, have a different reaction to, to, our, to your free energy uh, effort. Uh, can you sort of explain to, uh, to our listener uh, uh, what, what do you mean? What kind of people? Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good, good question. Yeah, what, what I noticed was that we, uh, we here convened at Montesueños, which is our retreat center in Ecuador. We convened uh, a group of visionaries that flew in from all over the world. We had people from India, from... Uh, from uh, Europe, uh, all over South America, North America. And we asked the question, how can we create a sustainable future for humankind? And certainly to me, a very big piece of that is free energy. And so when I proposed that to the group, uh, what I, I saw were mixed reactions. Mm -hmm. And one group was what they called themselves the pragmatists. They were very practical people who never got beyond the, their skepticism about whether it was even possible, whether free energy was even possible. If I couldn't explain it to him in 10 minutes, <laughs> then 
that then he kind of shut me off and said, well, that's that's not a practical thing. Obviously, the scientific community doesn't believe it is, and therefore uh, it's not worth considering. So th- that that's one category. Another category are what I call the truth seekers. These are people that want to uncover conspiracies all over the world, and they are, are more interested in the problem than in the solution. They can't get beyond complaining, and I I certainly uh, empathize with them because, in, indeed, there are many, many lies that are being told by public figures all over the world, and, and that's uh, very valid. It's very important to get the truth of what's happening. So there are those people. Then there were the spiritualists, people that s- sort of saw the harmony in everything, the the kind of... The, the Buddhists, the, uh, the the people that were were that saw a spiritual truth, a higher reality, but they were uh, a little bit maybe too unstructured. And then finally, there were the deep ecologists, the people that uh, the pragmatists would call the doomsdayers, the people that thought the earth was finished. There was there was no more possibility for any kind of uh, uh, saving grace. And a lot of the ecologists, the, the, uh, not only the scientists, but the environmentalists or the political progressives, uh, are, are so, uh, uh, so cognizant of the problem, they don't really see the solution. So these four groups uh, didn't really come together. And what we need to be able to do is, is become aware that there are these different approaches and to be able to set them to be able to say, well, each group does bring a truth to the table, but can we now go beyond that and can we look at the solutions to the problems so we can truly have a sustainable future? Well, thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. O'Leary, you know, for, um, for enlightening us on this very, very important topic. And I think we're just, uh, time is about, you know, uh, uh, you know up now. So, uh, I know that you, you, uh, there's a possibility you may be uh, coming over to this part of the world, and then we hope to be able to, uh, to see you in person. Yeah, Thank that you. would be great. Love to <coughs> look forward to seeing you. I would you. love to come to Hong Kong. I, uh, I, I, I just uh, I, I find the people very friendly. I, I see that China in general would be a, a, a wonderful place to, uh, to discuss some of these things and to, uh, and to meet many of you uh, in person. That would be very nice. If you can come, please let us know as soon as possible. Maybe we can organize some seminar for you. Yeah. Yes, yes, that would be nice. I, I would like to do that. Good. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Okay, bye bye. Now. bye. 六创意健康店系一间最多元化选择嘅健康店，提供二千多种不同种类嘅健康食品同饮品、环保家居及个人用品、健康产品、营养补充剂、一系列健康书籍等等。六创意健康店电话：二八八二四八四八，网址：三个 W dot H E A L T H S H O P dot com dot H K。呢位一个，好啦。咁我頭先呢，就同誒誒 Dr. Brian O'Leary 啊傾咗大概都差唔多一個鐘頭啦。咁咁誒誒 Dr. O'Leary 呢，本身係以前一個誒 NASA 嘅 astronaut， 一個一個太空人嚟。佢佢當時後備 astronaut， 即係佢未冇上過去。佢冇上過去，佢唔係後備，佢係佢係佢個 project Mars project 個火星個計劃。咁但最尾火星計劃呢，就係即係取消咗啦，咁所以呢，佢就結果就真係即係冇真正上過去嘅咁。因為後任 astronaut， 後任後任就等緊上任。有個任務，有個任務<笑>即係佢一個佢一個即係科學家、呃、太空人咁樣樣嘅一個咁嘅身份嘅。咁但係當然啦，最最終大家都即係嗰個火星嗰個任務係冇即係冇冇實行到啦，咁所以佢冇話冇話真正上過去嘅咁。咁但佢自己呢，亦都話亦都係誒誒加州誒 Berkeley 大學嘅。一個、啊、天文、啊、物理學家嚟嘅，佢個佢嗰個博士學位喺嗰度。咁但係當然咧，佢一一直咧好多年嚟咧，都係嗰啲美國呢幾間好著名嗰啲大學啊，啲 IB 啲學校啊 ，Cornell 啊 ，Princeton 啊咁樣樣。咁誒，佢、啊、做咗好幾年之後咧，原來咧佢佢有一個好特別嘅經驗嘅。原來佢有一次咧，佢有一種叫做遠距離嘅誒嘅觀望嘅經嘅嘅經驗啊，即係佢佢靈魂出竅咧，去到一個地方咧，佢睇到一啲嘢。
咁佢完，咁跟住佢後生嗰時咧，有一次咧係遇到一個誒，即係誒交通意外咁樣啦。咁佢就差唔多，我哋叫一個叫做接近死亡嘅經驗啦。咁好多人咧喺呢個喺嗰一剎那，嗰一好短暫嘅時間咧，佢會經體驗咗好多好多嘢嘅。咁呢啲經驗咧就開始令佢開始對，即係我哋所謂叫做誒，即係嗰啲嗰啲誒 paranormal 嘅 phenomenon 啊，即係呢度咁樣嘅誒呢個咁樣嘅現象咧，超自然嘅現象咧，佢會有興趣咯。咁但當然啦，佢自己係一個傳統嘅科學家，喺個傳統嘅誒嘅嗰個嗰個誒，即係學誒大學裏面嘅誒嘅環境呢，佢發現呢，誒佢佢開始發現呢，當佢係研究呢啲嘢嘅時候呢，佢哋嗰啲同學啊同事呢，就係好即係好好好好不滿嘅啊，即係處處留難佢啊咁。咁佢記得佢有次呢，佢去誒 Caltech。去 Caltech， 大家知道啦 ，Caltech 係個好出名嘅誒誒美國嘅誒加州嘅一個誒，差唔多好似 MIT 咁啊，見到誒 Caltech 係加加州嘅誒誒誒，即係誒加省誒誒科技學院咁。咁佢去到嗰時咧，佢有一位教授咧，直情咧當佢唔存在，當佢好似冇冇冇到過嗰個地方咁樣。咁所以呢，佢自己經驗呢，最後呢，令到佢覺得呢，佢唔能夠再喺呢啲咁樣嘅傳統嘅誒嘅誒嘅學術界裏面呢去去去工作。咁佢就於是就徹底離開晒。咁跟住呢，佢就誒全世界各處呢去探訪有啲有特異功能嘅人。啊！佢去過印度啊，睇過誒誒沙耶巴巴咁樣，咁大家都知道沙耶巴巴呢係有能力呢係變一啲戒指俾你嘅。咁佢當時呢，佢又佢三次帶啲美國啲其他啲人呢係去拜訪誒印度嘅沙耶巴巴。咁佢有一次沙耶巴巴呢，就喺佢面前呢，就個手養幾養呢，咁就變咗隻戒指。咁啲戒指呢，就俾佢戴，睇下 fit 唔 fit。咁佢話呢，戴咗之後呢，覺得個戒指仲係太大，唔係好 fit。咁啊，沙巴華呢就拎佢出嚟之後呢，就吹幾大去闊闊咁吹兩吹呢，咁咧佢帶返落去就 fit 啦咁樣。咁呢啲係佢自己親身經驗嚟嘅。咁除咗呢位誒，我喺香港好多人都聽過下啦。印度人好明顯啊，當佢係當佢係差唔多係 guru 咁拜咁樣嘅。咁佢亦都去過其他嘅國家探訪一啲即係真係有第二功能嘅人。咁其中有一位呢，佢本書有睇到啲相片嘅。咁嗰人呢，係可以呢，將一支叉叉嘅叉住誒叉住一隻一隻細細嘅嘅香腸仔咁樣。咁佢就用佢嘅意念呢，係將嗰支叉呢，就係誒誒截斷佢，截分開兩嚿啊！唔係唔係就彎啊，唔係咬咬彎佢喎，係直情呢，係一一支叉叉住嘅嘅嘅嘅誒誒誒香腸嘅，咁直情呢，就分開兩截。咁咁呢啲係佢自己親身經驗嘅。咁佢就除咗呢個之後呢，佢就去探探訪訪好多啲啊研究免費能源嗰啲科學家啊，咁喺不同嘅國家，印度啊、日本啊，咁佢本書記載咗好多嘅。咁即係好明顯呢，佢係佢係自己係一個誒誒、呃、有有足夠嘅誒嘅學術背景嘅人呢，係去親身去去去去去了解呢啲科學家嘅研究工作。咁佢嘅結論呢，就話呢，其實呢，好多呢啲咁樣嘅誒嘅嘅嘅嘅嘅儀器啊，嗰啲發明物呢，啊嗰啲即係佢哋嗰啊已經係根本係可以係可以做得到嘅啊，可以做到啊，我哋係可以做到啲免費能源嘅嘅嘅嘅儀器嘅。咁但係結果呢，佢睇發啊，佢親眼見到啦，亦都睇到好多呢啲人呢，係佢嗰啲誒研究呢，係俾人壓制咗啦，或者呢，係有人呢，係故意破壞佢哋啦，甚至乎呢，呢啲科學家呢，係無即係喺離離奇奇裏面呢，係死亡嘅啊！咁所以佢覺得呢，即係好明顯呢，係誒喺呢個雖然呢個免費誒嗰、呃那個免費能源呢，對我哋人類嘅將來嘅影響會會咁大啦，咁但係亦都係對好多而家記得利益嗰啲機構啊、能源公司啊、石油石油誒公司啊、煤氣公司啊誒嗰啲係一個好大嘅經濟嘅威脅啊嘛，咁所以令到咧呢啲科技呢係冇辦法，然後冇辦法發展落去。咁但係我哋都講講過啦，即係誒而家地球好多好多嘅問題，其實經濟上嘅問題呢。可以咁講呢百分之八十嘅經濟嗰啲活動呢，都係同我哋嗰個能源嗰個資源有關嘅。啊，譬如我哋，我哋唔係就咁，然後要要要用電，啊，唔係話就咁要要開車，要要要有要有誒、呃、要有汽油。其實好多時候我哋任何嘅生產工作裏面呢，都係需要好多能源嘅。咁我哋好多污染嘅問題呢，都係因為呢喺個經濟嘅考慮之下呢，我哋唔想再花多啲誒能源呢去嚟到處理呢啲咁樣嘅垃圾㗎嘛。咁如果好啦，如果我哋啊，有有呢啲免費嘅能源嘅話呢，其實簡單嚟講呢，好多人一聽呢都會好有好有興趣㗎喇。我哋地球上啲人呢，可以咁講呢，大家都唔使即係死做爛做，最後得個吉
大家可能工作四小時呢，就已經大家丰衣足食噶啦。咁就所以其實呢、這個嗰、那个所谓免費能源嘅存在呢，同埋运唔运用得到呢，可以咁讲呢，系對我哋現時人類所面對嘅問題啊。啊，資源嘅問題啊，地球污染嘅問題啊，其實可以係講係最終最終能夠徹底解決噶。咁所以我哋係，我即係我我誒，當阿阿 James 咧介紹咗啊啊呢呢位啊 Brian O'Leary 嘅博士喺喺 Ecuador 咧，因為我諗住我都要去嗰邊去去即係去玩下啦咁樣樣。咁但係我就即刻咧就改變我嘅行程咧，就直情親身咧就去佢嗰、那個去佢個屋企嗰度咧就探訪下佢咁。咁所以我頭先嗰個片段都聽到佢啦嚇。即係佢喺呢方面咧，係即係從事咗好耐嘅研究啦。佢真係好有遠見同埋好有理想嘅一位一位嘅科學家嚟嘅。好啦，咁大家聽咗之後啦，大家有啲咩諗法，有啲咩諗頭？咁 James 都提出一個問題咯，係咪？即、就、係、是、我同阿 James 初初講嘅時候咧 ，James 話唔得嘅，唔得嘅，因為咧好危險嘅。啊，因即係如果呢啲咁樣嘅免費能源咧，係好明顯咧，能源可以好似好似核子彈咁啦，核子彈係一個一個好好無窮盡嘅一個好好威威好即係威力好巨嘅。啊嘅嘅能源，咁呢個能源呢，可以成為一個毀滅性嘅炸彈啊嘛！咁如果我有一個免費無窮盡嘅能源，即係即係喺理喺喺即係喺理論上呢，我哋可以放咗個咁樣嘅嘢呢，係慢慢將個地球呢係燃燒晒㗎嘛！咁所以阿 Jamie 先話係不可能出現，出現都唔掂，人類係唔能夠有有呢啲咁嘅工具嘅。咁頭先啊，阿 Brian 都提及囉。咁原來好多呢啲能源呢，即係點解咁過去嘅嘅發展過程裏面呢，即係有時候時得時唔得呢。咁。咁 Brian 提出一樣嘢呢，原來好可能呢，呢啲能源呢係同我哋嗰、那個，同我哋嗰、那個嗰、那個意念啊，我哋嗰我哋所謂叫 consciousness 啊，係係有有聯繫關係嘅。如果我哋誒係有啲即係壞嘅念頭呢，咁、那、呢個嗰、那個能源機可能會停止活作嘅，活動嘅。咁如果係咁啊，犀利啦！咁啊，真係好可能一個好好嘅。好好嘅誒嘅工具啦，訓練啲人啦嚇，即係睇我啲人人類呢，我哋嗰、那個我哋嗰個念嗰、那個有冇有冇咁多壞念頭或者好念頭囉。如果好念頭多，大家有好念頭多呢，咁呢啲呢啲咁樣嘅免費能源機器呢，就可以運作。好啦，大家點睇？佢我即係問佢嗰個問題，咁佢答就好似你講啊，佢話啊好多呢啲咁嘅咁啲咁嘅。啊！免費能源機器呢，就有時 work， 有時唔 work， 咁啊啲人就唔知點解，有人懷疑呢，就同嗰個人嗰個意念係有關係。咁我就醒起，醒起咩呢？我嗰陣時研究嗰個 Jo e Cell， 咁嗰個 Jo e 咧，佢以前亦講過㗎，不過就即係已經唔記得咗啦。佢呢，就整佢成功做咗個 Jo e Cell 之後呢，裝落架車度呢。然後調到個車個 engine 咧，嗰、那個嗰、那個嗰、那個 engine 就會 work 啦，嗰、那個引擎，咁就唔需要用電油嘅、啊、但係呢，佢亦講過，有啲人如果佢行埋嚟一碰架車呢，架車就死㗎啦，嗰、那個 engine 即刻會死嘅、啊、如果佢碰得耐呢，佢就佢嗰個人走咗之後都攤唔得返著，尤其如果個人係有病呢，一碰架車即刻死火。所以佢就係一講呢，我就醒翻起呢一樣嘢。嗯，即係佢講嘅係係有根據嘅，有根據，絕對係有根據。阿 Jo 已經講過係有咁嘅經歷嘅。所以呢，阿 Jo 就話：如果你即係整咗你架車，裝咗個 Jo Cell 啦，唔用唔用電油呢，你第一你唔可以俾第二個人揸嘅，<笑>你淨係你自己揸 OK。你一俾第二個人揸，如果嗰個人個意念唔好呢，你架車即刻死㗎啦。第二呢，就最好就鬥都唔好鬥。唔、嗯、可以去碰呢架車、啊，你自己鬥冇問題，即係假設你嘅意念係好㗎。嚇，咁你鬥呢就冇事，人哋鬥一鬥呢就會死火。所以呢，如果佢係如果係咁嘅話呢，就真係有有得救啊！有得救，即係即係有安全，有有安全嘅保障喺度，有保險 f u s 喺度。如果你可以即係嗰個人嗰個意念係唔掂呢，佢會自動會失靈㗎。咁就唔錯，真係唔錯，呢、這個咁嘅諗法。嗱，因為呢，喺嗰本誒誒阿米星星的小孩裏面呢，咁佢都有講，即係人類同太空人嘅誒外星人嘅對我哋誒太空誒對,對地球人嘅誒即係嘅觀嘅嘅嘅嘅觀察啦。咁佢成日都好提及呢，人類嗰個 consciousness 一定要提升嘅咁樣。咁即係如果我哋咁講呢，好可能啊，即係而家喺喺地球上好多好多人呢，都喺呢方面呢，係追求即係要誒靈性嘅修嘅嘅修養啊。誒、啊，我哋個人嘅品德嘅嘅提升啊，咁咁佢嗱喺嗰本書度都提及呢，即係當人嗰個所謂嗰、那個誒嗰、啊那個意念呢係提升嘅時候呢，咁我地球呢就
，就有機會做到啲嘢啦咁如果係頭先所講嘅，即係呢啲免費能源呢，好可能即係同我哋嘅人類嗰個意念嘅提升呢，係有直接關係嘅話呢，咁真係好可能係將來嘅事會咁發生嘅，係咪？係、啊、嘛、啊，即係有可能真係嘅，即係到到我人類嘅意念提升到咁上下呢，我哋個人類個個問題解決方法就會出現。如果 sell 呢個呢，我就比較清楚啊，因為我我前一陣我都同你提過，因為我最近發現呢，呢、這個租 sell 同嗰個氣係有關，即係氣功嘅氣，即係所謂意念啦，呢啲含量都係同意詞嚟嘅。咁、嗯嗯、因為水呢，同個氣呢係有關係嘅，即係、啊、你搞嗰個 h o m e o p a t h y 都係同樣嘅嘢，即係水可以儲存嗰、那個記憶嗰、那個，記憶嗰、那個嗰、那個，即係有個記憶喺度嘅可以將嗰啲嗰啲你嗰啲叫咩？嗰啲知識啊，唔係叫知識，叫叫咩？信息啊，信息或者意念啦嚇，可以將記憶到呢個意念啊。咁租 sell 呢個呢，就我都明白，但係其他嗰啲 devices 呢，我就因為嗰啲冇水啊嘛，譬如我 G P U 佢入面冇水嘅。咁佢記咗喺邊度呢？佢點即係佢佢點樣影響到個運作呢？我就唔知啦。嗱喺佢書，佢頭先度都誒誒阿 Brian 都有誒、呃、有有企圖形容俾佢睇啦。咁通常呢，佢我哋有我哋有叫做 zero 誒 zero point view 嘅。咁即係呢個呢，係一個一個零下誒二二百七十三度以下嘅一個所謂絕對零度呢。Absolute zero 啊嘛。Absolute zero 嗰度呢，我仲可以攞到能源嘅。咁佢通常呢啲咁樣嘅誒設施呢，都係有啲有啲有啲誒、呃、用磁力推動磁電磁磁力推動嗰啲咁樣嘅輪盤呢。咁喺喺喺喺個轉動裏面呢，係可以吸收呢啲咁樣嘅嘅能量嘅。咁佢佢頭先所講啦，佢見到喺印度見到嗰個啦，咁佢就開始推動，開始插住蘇，推動到咁上之後呢，佢掹咗插蘇呢，佢不斷咁轉動，即係不斷不斷咁正轉動嘅。咁即係話呢。佢呢啲叫所謂叫做 solid state 嚇，呢啲咁呢啲咁樣嘅誒誒 magnetic 嘅嘅嘅 wheel 啦，嚇呢啲咁樣嘅輪盤咧，咁係可以咧係設計到咧係吸取呢啲咁樣嘅啊嗰個個宇宙個能量啊嘛，咁呢個就其中一個方法啦。咁仲有一個方法咧，就係、是、我哋以前都提及啦，誒誒嗰個誒 U U Brown 係一個誒澳澳洲嘅一位誒一個一位發明家啦，咁佢可以將水咧係化國化為氧同埋氫啊嘛，咁但係咧佢上次所講咧，我哋嗰。我哋所講嘅氧嗰個氫咧，唔係同我一般人我哋用我哋喺喺讀書嗰陣時候啊，將嗰啲電解水咁分氧分同埋氫氣。其實佢佢氫咧係有多唔同類型嘅氫咁樣。咁佢話咧，佢發明咗呢個咧，佢叫做叫做 brown gas 啦，就可以做燃燒用。啊，咁咪同租收。好接近咯，好接近係咪？係啦，咁即係呢個又另外另外一類型咯。咁仲有一個呢，係佢叫做 c o l d fusion， 咁係誒係 Utah 大學有兩位化學化學教授呢，就發明咗呢，係可以點樣呢？係用個化學嘅嘅嘅嘅嘅嘅催苗催煤嘅方法啦，就嚟到呢，係製造呢、這個。佢 c o l d fusion 一樣有水。係嘛？重水添。係啦係啦，佢製造啲製造啲重水，咁即係佢話呢，誒、呃，我哋唔需要喺一個高温之下呢，新先先產生核核子嘅嘅嘅融合，喺一個低温都做到咁。咁佢佢佢本書有有講嘅，頭先佢冇機會長談呢樣嘢啦。咁佢 MIT 有一位誒誒，即係佢嘅 scientific writer 嚟嘅。啊！喺喺喺麻省工工學院嘅一位科學家咧，佢發現咧，誒、啊、當時咧，誒、啊、好多科學家咧攻擊啊，攻擊 cold fusion 呢個科技。咁因為本身咧啲科學家咧係自己咧係用咗好多好多好多億萬元咧係研究 hot fusion 嘅。咁如果突然之間咧呢、這個曲呢、這個所謂呢、這個嗰個冷卻嘅嘅嘅嘅核融嘅方法咧係搞得掂嘅時候咧，咁佢哋以前用咗成。用用咗成數以數以百，然後數以百億嘅嘅研究基金完全冇結果咧，就會被即係會會被影響到咯。咁佢發現喺呢個 MIT 呢個 scientist 咧，發現呢班 M I 麻省工工學院嗰啲教授咧，係有心咧故意係做住啲假嘅研究咧嚟到推翻呢樣嘢。咁一路之下咧，呢位呢位誒科學家咧就離開咗離開咗麻省工學院，咁啊創立一個一個叫做誒、呃、一個叫做誒、呃、一一一一份罕物嘅。咁呢份刊物呢，係專門呢係報道下，即係呢個世呢個世界上有不同嘅研究呢，嗰、那個進度啊，嗰、那個免費能源嘅進度。咁好可惜呢，誒、啊，好似兩三年前呢，呢位科學家呢，喺佢媽媽屋企呢，就離奇地呢，係俾嗰啲賊佬入屋呢，打劫呢，就將佢殺埋嘅。咁所以大家好多人都都覺得呢，其實呢個呢，亦都係一種即係呢啲一種係一種被被被謀殺嘅嘅、啊、科學家之一嚟嘅。咁喺嗰本書裏面呢，就提及有一個網站。咁係有一位誒、呃、有一位記者呢，係記錄咗五十三位
研究研究呢啲誒科技嘅嘅嘅科學家啊，同埋發明發明發明人啦，佢哋都係係即係離奇離奇失蹤、離奇死亡嘅。咁即係好明顯咧，即係誒呢個唔係一個自然嘅機會咯。啊，好多人無無意無無無端端咁，可能年紀輕輕有心臟病發啦咁。咁即係我哋其實已經有科技咧，係可以射一啲電磁場咧，係令到嗰個人咧係係出現心臟病發。咁即係令到你嘅心臟突然之間停頓。咁呢個呢啲呢呢啲資料咧喺呢本書咧《The Energy Solution Revolution》咧啊，我哋網上你睇到嗰幅嗰幅圖片嘅啦，咁都有有有提及嘅。咁所以嗱，點解我哋成日講呢樣嘢咧？我哋都覺得咧，呢、這個地球嘅問題咧，我哋永遠咧都唔去深入嗰個瞭解嗰個問嗰、那個問題嘅根源啦。啊，我哋往往都喺一個問題嘅表面嘅現象咧，係兜圈子兜圈子。咁而家我哋所出面坊間所見到嗰啲啊嗰啲所謂嗰個誒另類嘅能源啦，好多所講呢，佢呢本書都提過啦。佢話呢個呢係唔會真正解決到嘅，因為呢呢啲咁嘅設施呢，第一呢啲呢啲能源嗰、那個嗰、那個誒嗰、啊那個來源呢係第一唔係咁穩定。我我記得我我我上個星期我去去加拿大返去多倫多，咁我就揸車去返我以前浮仔工作嘅地方，成兩個鐘頭車程嘅。咁沿途呢，我發現呢，有有有一笪地方呢。誒、呃、有好多呢啲咁樣嘅誒風嗰啲風業發電、風力發電嗰啲咁嘅設施喺度。咁我突然之間，我記我記憶之中，我廿幾年前喺嗰度，然後差唔多每個星期都經過嘅，從來冇啲嘢嘅。咁於是乎呢，我落車呢，咁去去去，即係去去去感受下啦。咁一落車呢，發現呢係風好大嘅，即係突然之間係嗰個地方係特別大風嘅。咁即係好明顯啦，你要風力發電呢，你有地域嘅局限。係嘛？同埋呢啲咁樣嘅設施，呢啲咁樣嘅業嘅嘅呢啲咁樣嘅建，然後建設物係好大嚿噶嘛？係嘛？好啦，咁你就算你做咗之後咧，你都有一個問題咧，你要將呢啲電力儲咗咧，同埋輸送去要應用嘅地方噶嘛？啊，咁就算你用水力發電又好，咩都好，啊，用嗰、那個啊啊太陽能都係咧，你要需要嗰、那個嗰、那個物料個資源同埋個維修咧，係基本上咧，好可能你用嘅能源咧，可能多過你真正能夠吸收嘅。咁同埋佢頭先都提及啦，佢本書有講嘅，差唔多要用二十誒 two trillion 啊 ，two trillion 即係即係兩萬億，兩萬兆億啊，兩萬兆唔係兆億啊，兩萬兩兆億或者兩萬兆億，兩啊即係兩兩萬億，即係要有兩萬億嘅設施咧，先能夠取代咗而家目前嗰啲咁樣嘅啊，即係我哋嗰啲所謂啊啊，即係個碳啊 hydro 碳啊。碳碳化能源噶嘛，咁所以佢話咧，佢話其實嗰啲根本咧，講真嚟講咧，唔係真正嘅解決方法。咁即係都係一種揾錢方法咯，即係唔用嗰啲方法揾錢，我第啲方法揾錢咯。咁你話乾淨啲咧，可能即係睇個物料嘅嘅應用嘅需求咧，其實咧都係有好多需要好大量嘅資源、物料同埋地域，同埋係一個唔穩定、唔可靠嘅。咁亦都需要呢啲咁樣嘅電纜咯，宣佈呢啲電電纜咯。咁呢電纜我都睇到啦，一個好大嘅危機。如果萬一嗰、那個嗰、那個電纜個輸送站咧係受到某種嘅因素影響，或者太陽嘅黑點影響咧，咁突然之間停頓咧，你個城市咪直情就即時即時停頓咯。咁喺而家最近嘅好多啲，即係喺嗰啲誒誒電誒、啊、電視有多啲咁樣嘅誒，即係嗰啲誒 documentary 都有提啦，係嘛？其中有出去講又又講啊，如果嗱紐約城市咁因為受到呢個太陽嘅黑點影響，咁亦都講二零一二年之前。啊！二零一二年之前會出現嘅咁，咁就呢個都係一個即係喺佢佢提及咧，其實呢啲真係唔係真正、啊、有效嘅方法咯。咁真正有效嘅方法咧，其實已經存在咗噶啦。早年啊喺、啊、即係比較喺實實在在，我哋睇得到就係 Nicole Tesla 一八年前咧幫 J.P. Morgan 嗰、啊、公司咧，佢啊嚟到即係發展呢啲咁樣嘅啊，佢嘅轉嘅輸,輸送電嘅。佢基本上咧，佢發明到咧係可以唔需要用電線咧，可以將個電源咧係輸送去遠遠遠遠處地方嘅。咁但係佢同時咧，佢亦都同時做咗一樣嘢咧。原來咧，佢個佢嗰個能源咧係可以由嗰個地心咧係不不斷咁吸收出嚟噶嘛。咁 J.P. Morgan 第一，佢係佢係即係佢公司係係係能源公司嚟噶嘛。第二，好似啊 Brian 所講，佢係擁有好多啲誒礦誒即係礦誒礦場嘅銅嘅礦場嘅。咁銅嘅銅線咪做嗰啲咁樣嘅誒嗰個電源嗰啲嗰啲電嗰啲電路嗰電纜咯，咁即對佢嚟講係一個經濟上一個不利嘅，咁所以就就直情中斷佢嗰個研究。
咁可以咁講呢，一百年前我已經有咁嘅能力囉。我哋成個地球會大大改觀。我哋所所我成日好所討論好多呢啲咁嘅問題呢，根本就可以咁講呢，係全部可以應刃而解嘅。咁我大家都有機會呢，喺我前一排呢，我哋都介紹嗰、那個嗰、呃那個片段啦，《曬界實證》嚇。咁《曬界》佢個個片段呢都講呢，其實如果我哋用返目前我認識嗰啲能源啦、啊，譬如個 g e o t h e r m a l 啊，啊啊光啊嗰、那個啊太陽能啊之類此類啦，咁其實我哋都都足夠可以解決現時。嘅嘅嗰個我哋所謂嗰個地球上嘅人類嗰啲問題嘅，咁但係而家我哋所講嘅免費能源咧，可以咁講係另外一個更加深嘅層面，更加徹底嘅層面。好啦，咁點咧？咁<笑>我哋都睇聽到啦嚇，咁啊 Brian 話佢有機會咧。即係佢都經常被邀請啊，去世界各地去去演講嘅。咁佢如果下一次佢佢去印度又好，或者去、呃、去、呃、去、呃、日本又好啦，咁佢會路路過，起碼嚟到呢個東南亞區啦。咁我有希望咧，有機會呢，係再請佢返嚟囉，同我大家再講下。但我有樣擔心呢、就是，就係其實唔止係咁簡單嘅，當呢個石能源係咁容易攞得到，用之不竭，每一個人都有，冇錯。成唔知係影響到我哋經濟嘅，係影響我哋整個社會嘅。我哋整個人類社會完全個發展方向完全會唔同嘅。可能到時嗰陣唔需要政府啦，要政府嚟做咩呀？<笑>政府需要做嘢，我哋都自己做咗咯。係<笑>、嗯，成<笑>個成個世界會變嘅。呢、這個世界冇咗政府嘅喎。冇網管。<笑><笑><笑>咁當然啦，好多大型機設啦，咁都要有有即係有一個有有一個機構去去去。唔係啊，到時大型機建就咁樣做噶啦，因為我哋每一個人都有自己嘅資本，有自己能源噶嘛。我哋咪同我哋有共同興趣嘅人咪夾咯。係，咁係啊。即係依家即係公司都只係一個變咗係一個誒、呃、方面我哋交易嘅場所嚟嘅啫。即係做譬如我我依家想整個大啲嘅。譬如我想，因為我有免費能源嘛，我如果想喺喺誒喺摩比沙漠滑雪 ，OK， 咁<笑>你將啲水變曬冰河咯，嚟將啲將啲空氣啲水變曬冰落雪，擠到啲雪咁啊，擠到雪場。我咪揾揾扎咁嘅人，咪夾夾下我哋自己啲嘢，去嗰度就整一座整一座咁嘅嘢。其實其實你唔使㗎啦，你到時咧，你每人咧可以坐個嗰、那個誒嗰、那個 first class 嘅位，舒舒服服。咁啊飛去嗰個地方，因為嗰啲嗰燃油唔使錢㗎喇嘛，唔係亦都唔會污染㗎喇嘛。我唔坐飛機，我唔坐飛機都煩啊！咁你入面嗰架飛機可能裏邊有好大個位啊，有 s o 有氣啊，咁即係唔使唔使塞三百個人入去啦嘛，塞一百個人佢都可以可以可以足夠嚟到送你過去。係嘛？即係成個世界會係好唔同㗎啦！啊，坐飛碟，坐飛碟啊，可能 tele transportation 啊，直卜一聲咁啊去咗啦。咁啊，真係唔使啦！即係好多我，即係我哋而家好諗到嗰啲咁樣嘅困難啊，可能會有阻滯呢。其實到時根本就唔會再存在，因為成個即係成個成個世界會變到呢，係我哋暫時嚟講都係未未能夠想像得到㗎咯。啊，咁所以誒、啊，始終我哋到香港教育大行動呢，成日都講我哋唔好講啲無謂嘢，唔好講啲皮毛嘢。問到時我哋係諗宇宙嘅問題。咁咁講宇宙嘅一部分啦<笑>我哋要講啲徹底，我哋要出出去，真係要走出去㗎啦。時唔係喺個地球度玩㗎啦。宇宙更多變態。啊，更多變態啦！好啦，咁呢個係我哋一一直探討嘅。好啦，咁我哋呢一節嘅時間都差唔多。好。